All right. This is a quick video about chapter 4.2 in my new book that just came out today, Art and DIY Electronics. We have made videos about all these chapters. Here's a table of contents. We've gone through all these. And now we are at 4.2. Disobedience and Hairbrain 2000, Burlesque Technologies, High Lowness, and Neo Retroism. So, what does all that mean? A lot of big words. But thankfully, um, these Vietnamese dudes who make um, cardboard or Lamborghinis out of uh, cardboard, they will help guide us. So, Disobedience and Hairbrain 2000 by the Canadian and living in Germany artist uh, Lorik Kauka, uh, Burlesque Technologies, High Lowness, and Neo Retroism. So, um, one thing that I wanted to explore in, and I should show Hairbrain 2000 by Lorik Kauka, this is super funny. It, it's it's great because what it tries to do is it is a parody of VR that is built in 1993 and honestly it's still as prevalent or still as relevant today with you know the newest oculus devices I think that this still applies today uh, the way that this thing works it's made with a, actually there's a circuit diagram here, or a functional diagram. It works with a, a kitchen colander that has a bunch of relays mounted on a kitchen colander that's stuck on your head. And then you have this like mirrored glass, almost kaleidoscope type of thing in front of you. And there's a circuit board that has these um, uh, switches and a fuzzy ball bearing, or like a, a ball bearing wrapped with steel wool, and steel wool is used to create sparks. As you walk around and tilt your head, this ball rolls around and it triggers, uh, and it causes sparks of light as those logic connections close and it translates to your head so if you tilt tilt your body forward you get a sound clunking above your head toward the front if you move to the left it will the relays will click and pop to your left if you go to the right your uh your vr and a completely analog VR system will will give you this kind of immersive sound experience. So this is kind of an alternative kind of wonky DIY hack job of VR, but it's totally great. And and um, there are absolutely brilliant videos of Laura walking around Berlin um, with this thing, trying to navigate the metro go to tourist uh, locations, um, trying to navigate around with this VR helmet and this kind of wonky silver suit kind of from the future and, and has fun playing around with this kind of like junky Mad Max future that's kind of like an almost kind of like a WTF kind of thing. Um, you're not quite sure if it's a joke or if it's actually futuristic. Um, now what I do here is I try to dig up this idea of the burlesque. Um, the burlesque is a concept. Now I'm not meaning like old timey strip show here, which is a common use of the term burlesque, like burlesque dance performance which is great and good and all that. Uh, I'm not really interested in that here though. Um, 
I'm more interested in this older version of the burlesque. What burlesque means at its core is this idea that low class taking a swipe at a high class thing. So it's like a, a, a lowbrow attack on something highbrow. And this can also go in reverse. It can be a highbrow attack on something low class. It's about a, burlesque is, is kind of like class, classes, upper class making fun of lower classes or lower class making fun of higher classes. Like for example, to use an example of um, a performance, you could do, you could do a Shakespeare, uh, uh, an example of burlesque might be using a high class thing like uh, Shakespeare, but doing it with like low class swear words the whole way or doing it as um, the Simpsons, you know, as as a, uh, a like a low brow kind of thing, kind of making fun of the high brow. Uh, you could as well do um, you could also do the reverse or you could do an upper class thing that's a parody of a lower class thing. Like for example, you could use Shakespearean language to narrate an episode of the Simpsons, for example, uh, that would be, um, a different example of burlesque. Now I kind of pick this apart and try to explain it. I should say that I also, through the book, I try to use, relatively plain language. I mean, I like, uh, I did grad school at a place where Derrida had taught. Um, and it's not like I completely reject all of that, uh, French critical theory emanating out of May, 1968. Uh, but I throw a lot of it out. Uh, I don't think that a ton of it is super useful. A lot of it is really brilliant, but, um, I see that writing, related to science and technology studies and just using plain language uh, with core ideas that are really strong is a much better approach than trying to confuse people with uh, word pretzels. Anyhow, um, I then talk about this idea of VR being the uh, kind of a trend in VR that's always been around is this idea of um, of uh, it being liberating, but at the meanwhile, it's constantly technically intimidating and awkward. Uh, I actually had a chance to talk to Ivan Sutherland. Um, he's credited with inventing the first head mounted displays, uh, augmented reality displays, all sorts of hum human computer interaction inventions that uh, most of us use every day. I got to talk to him, interview him, and to be honest, he wasn't really thrilled at the idea of being called DIY electronics because he was not doing DIY electronics. They had a very well-funded lab, um, a lot of resources, world-class kind of stuff. My, my idea to include him here was not to say, oh, this is like, look at this DIY hack job. That's not the point. It's more to say that this uh, physical uh, contraption of... VR has been around um, since the 60s, 1968. People think that VR and like they talk about the metaverse as if it's something new. This has been around since the 60s. You know, I mean, and so I try to flesh this out. Um, I talk about uh, Myron Kruger, uh, Data Glove, Mitch Altman, um, other people who worked on the iPhone project lawnmower man all this kind of stuff at vpl research and then i compare this uh, kind of this approach of parody that laura kakauka takes as a um kind of uh, a skepticism around vr and that it's technology is ever going to really save us um I make some comparisons to the history of ubiquitous computing uh, mark weiser um, and, uh, then I try to explain this, uh, through the, through the words high lowness and neo retroism. Now, what I mean by this high lowness refers to kind of like an upper class 
thing uh, that's mashed up with a lower class thing, kind of upper class, lower class at the same time. Neo retroism has to do with kind of like the past and the future mashed up together into one object. Now, um, Laura Kakauka does both of those things when she, you know, uses spray foam in a kitchen colander and a ball bearing wrapped in a uh, steel wool and kind of glued together kind of VR. She kind of, she does, a par she's doing a parody of high tech in a clever way that's, you know, doesn't involve a lot of infrastructure, but, but is, is super funny. I mean, if you can see, if you ever see these videos of her walking around, it's, it's great. I mean, it would make, it would make a great YouTube video today. Still somebody doing exactly this, a knockoff of this piece. Um, and so I, I also talk about this high burlesque and low burlesque through technology, um, how different things can poke fun at each other. And then I try to say that artists and kind of independent designers and DIY makers and folks have an opportunity to build works through this idea of low burlesque. Now, what I mean by low burlesque is the idea of a, a lower class jab at something advanced. Artists can easily do this by making parodies of the technologies that are advanced, just like Laura Kakauka. And that concludes that chapter. Chapter 4.2 in art and diy electronics by me available at fine booksellers across the globe thanks you can buy it farewell